On the front page of the first newspaper this morning in Nigeria, uh, the big story this morning is talking, of course, of something that we will be looking at this morning on Breakfast Central, talking about the homily, a very interesting one there. It says, Christmas homily, again, Bishop Kuka flays Buari. That's the big story this morning on the front page of the newspapers. And say, say you've made Nigerians more vulnerable, country now further divided, false president's anti-corruption credentials, says menace now in Leviathan, nepotism further entrenched. That's the sub story under the big story. We're looking at this shortly. Uh, Bishop Puka has been very, very vocal. This is not the first time we've heard him talk and speak so strongly, even against the current administration. So uh, we'll talk more about this later on in the show. Peter Obi spends Christmas with Bainway IDPs, gives them three million naira largesse for their maintenance, it says. 2023 polls, article will win at first ballot, according to a spokesman. Now, at the top of the paper, a PDP group Capet's week over attack on Secondus says, Rivers governor still smarting from his loss of PDP presidential ticket VP slot. Now we'll go further down, we see after May 29, I'll leave Abuja to avoid any issues, says Buhari. He claims, and I quote, I have only one house in Daura to retire to. All right, uh, still on the front page, nine killed, 22 injured in Bochi, Lagos, Christmas day auto crashes. There've been several, bad, there's been bad news, like pockets of bad news on on Christmas Day. Normally Christmas is a time to be merry and to be happy, but it's just sad to have conversations about this happening all around the continent. We're talking about the fires, the, the accidents in South Africa that claimed lives. We're talking about the teenage pregnancies and children that gave birth to children on Christmas Day. We're talking about the lives of, you know, Christians that were killed in Southern Kaduna. We're talking about the nine that were killed in yeah. Bauchi. You know, it's just very sad to see these stories. 2023, arm yourself with PVC, Governor Autumn charges Nigerians. Ikpazu says, G5 agitation beyond 2023 elections. Pray for peace. Unity for Nigeria, Governor Inuwa charges Gombe intending Christian pilgrims. A boy governor sanctions APC for disobeying orders and campaign. Shared members attend Christmas church service in Kaduna. That must have been such a sight, a wonderful sight to see. PDP group attacks. Okapet's WK over attack on Secondo says, Rivers governor still smarting from his loss. All right, this is a story that they're repeating as well on the front page. And our final story this morning, o Oshibanjo implores mercy, grace for Nigeria. That's all that we can take this morning on the front page of First News. Let's see what's happening still in Nigeria. All right, um, let's go to the Daily Trust newspapers this morning. But I, 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 okay, well, luckily the story also is here. On the Daily Trust this morning, it says 14 killed in Bauchi, Kaduna, Ogun, auto accidents. Um, also, uh, once again, from Nigeria's president, Muhammad Bari, it says, uh, I will be far away from Abuja after May 29th, and that's from President Muhammadu Buhari. Um, and I, I heard, you know, when Olive had mentioned that story on First News, and I thought it would also just be interesting to say that the response after 40 plus people are killed in southern Kaduna, um, a state in Nigeria, the response from Nigeria's leadership and Nigeria's president, the response from Nigeria's press, should not be interviews on where the president will go after retirement. Should not be how many houses he has in Daura. Should not be his retirement plans. 40 plus people were killed, were murdered, have been buried, were brutally murdered in Southern Kaduna. There is currently an interview that has been um, you know, shared. You know, I, I think it was carried out by West Africa Weekly. Um, um, a documentary on people in southern Kaduna and how they've had to deal with these murders and these attacks for the last couple of years. The Nigerian government's very irresponsible reaction to the murder of its citizens is heartbreaking. Um, and it can be said in any language across the continent, it is heartbreaking seeing that when Nigerian lives are lost in such a brutal manner, the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people have zero reaction to it. It feels like just another day at work, hearing that bandits, terrorists, whoever they are, can wipe out 40 plus lives in a night and move on and just, and, and that's it. Business as usual, happy Christmas, happy holidays, compliments of the season. We move, you know, we move according to, you know, local, the Nigeria, local parlance, It yes. is heartbreaking. 
I mean, I, I saw it the pictures really of the mass burials that happened in Southern Kaduna. It was the most heart-wrenching thing to see. You know, 40 people plus, 40 plus people. They did a mass burial and then after that, there was still reports that terrorists attacked them again. And it just seems like these people are... They're living their lives on, on luck. Every day you go out and you come back, it's almost like it's a miracle for you to come back. Basic things that you should be guaranteed as a people would be, I mean, the least you can be guaranteed would be safety and security, that people can't just walk into your neighborhood and do a massive wipeout. But that's what's happening. And nobody's really saying much. In some sense, because people have been desensitized. We always say that again. People are desensitized to these killings. We don't have data. It's now numbers, it's no more names. That's why when the Black Lives Movement started, there were conversations about say their names, because when you say their names, you're attaching some level of importance to them. Also, even the reactions of the government, this is not the first time that you know the government has been accused of being insensitive, but so it, it, is... it, it genuinely is heartbreaking. And I'm sure that is you know some of the things that Bishop Kuka is speaking about. And um, when people talk about the achievements of a government and you know try to, um, you know, gaslight the nigerian people and say oh you know they may not have been perfect with this but at least they gave you this it is it's 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 a painful and very very sad you know argument um and once again i remember a couple of days or the day after or the, probably even the same day when the news broke about these people being killed the governor of the state who was one of the people who is moving around with the apc's candidate answering questions on his behalf at chatham house um the governor of the state was posting pictures or videos of him, you know, at some coronation of a traditional ruler in the state. It is painful. It is genuinely painful. And I don't know how we as a people, how, how Nigerians across the country cannot just feel the pain that these people are feeling or understand, you know, the, the, the trauma that these people are having to deal with every night. And how, how, and once again, how does a government not just care? Like, how do you have a government that does not even, it's not even a, it's not a big enough issue that 40 plus people died brutally. Just, they just didn't make it till the next day because they were attacked and they were killed. How do you have a government that just doesn't, there's no response, there's no speech, there's nothing, there, nothing whatsoever absolutely nothing i mean and the conversations we're hearing from the president of that country is about the fact that he has one house in in daura katsina state and you know where he's going to retire to or where he's going to do after retirement you know what we see what, we, what a lot of people have said is you know how with people older people for example the older they get the more brazen they get the less they care about what people think so the government is already old it's at a stage where it's already existing no there's nothing that i can say, say or do to hold them to account. It's why fuel scarcity has been going on for months and nothing is being done. This is the longest, I know, since this current administration, I don't think we've ever had the fuel scarcity this bad since the current administration, but it's already on its way out. So, I mean, what can you really do? I'm still going to go out, I'm still going to go. That's the kind of sense that Nigerians are saying that they're receiving from the current administration. So it's just, there's so much that's going wrong, but there's so much that still needs to be done.